is holding a plan. He says, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God will be our most what? Effectively helpers. Those of this class who are apt and intelligent will serve as decoys to draw others into our snares. Many will not fear their influence because they profess what? So he's going to have traitors within the walls. Other seven Adventists that we will not fear the danger within. And it says, because they will profess the what? Same faith. We will leave them, this is Satan talking, thus to conclude, number one, that the requirements of Christ are less strict than they once believed. Has that taken place? You know, right now today we say, oh, God is not that strict. But my Bible says that God is the same what? Yesterday, today, and forever, that I am the Lord, I change what? Not. It says that by conformity to the world, they would exert a greater influence with what? That if we just join in an ecumenical movement with other churches, we can win more people in Babylon. Is that what the message says? The, the Bible says Babylon is what? Fallen, come out of her, my people. Let me show you something. When you understand this, man, I'm going to pass through this. You know that man is right there? I wish I could tell you. You know this man is right here? A man by the name of Leroy Froom. We're going to tell you more about him. This, is, this man led our church down a direction that brought us to trouble. Now, but this is what this man said. Notice the year. What year? 1944. This is in the ministry magazine. This is still, this ministry magazine is still going on today. He was, in fact, one of the first ones that started. Him and A.G. Daniels started the ministry magazine. Now, this says, look at what he said. How dare a man. Now, he has been a teacher in our universities years ago. This man died in 1974. It says, how dare a man contemplate or have the temerity to present the decree, degree of what? Doctor of divinity gain in the universities of Babylon as a credential for teaching or preaching this threefold message. The second stipulation of which is Babylon is what? Fallen is fallen. Come out of her, my people. This man is saying, how can a person go to an outside university, an outside seminary, get his PhD and believe he can teach the three angels' messages? When that message, that second message says that Babylon is fallen. Now, this is 1944. You think that this is what we hear in our ministry magazine today? Look what he says. How dare. We accept such a Babylonian credential in lieu of mastery of what? The truth. Shall a man go into Babylon to gain strength and wisdom to call men out of Babylon? How can you go to Babylon, get her doctors and degrees, and then say, come out of her? It says, to ask the question is but to disclose how far some have compromised with Babylon. As they have gone back to Babylon to drink from her wells of wisdom. Oh, for the living waters of truth, fresh from the word, someone needs to what? Now, my brothers and sisters, it's dangerous to put, preach and then have your message recorded. You know that this man is the same man that led us in 1957 into the ecumenical movement. First, he said you can't do it. You know, just because we make a profession doesn't mean we have the conversion. Less than 20 years. This is the man, do you know, that wrote the book, Questions on Doctrines and Answers. In 57. It says, someone needs to sound an alarm. We need to grip ourselves and halt a growing trend that if it becomes entrenched will bring disaster through neutralizing our message. And then the devil used him to neutralize the message. Hosanna today. Crucify him tomorrow if we're not converted. I want conversion. What do you say? And my brothers and sisters, we don't have long. Look what this says. You know what this is right here? What is that? CPR. You know we need some CPR. You know, you know right now, today, not only do we need this, can little children learn CPR? Yes. You see the little children having classes. You know right now, we need to be doing CPR classes. You know why? Our church is dead. And somebody needs to do some CPR. Now, we're going to give it another name. Let's see if we're going to give it a name. Watch what it says now. We're going to call it CPRR. Now, you know what your question should be? What is CPRR? 
You know what it is? Let's see. Let's read and then we'll see. It says, we are made sad. As we see in many places so much left undone that should be done, but the Lord will use in the accomplishment of his work means that we do not now what? See. He will raise up from among the common people, men and women, to do his work. So God must wake up who? The common people to do this work. Even as of old he called fishermen to be his disciples, there will soon be a what? Another name for that is revival and reformation. There will soon be an awakening that will surprise many. Those who do not realize the necessity of what is to be what? Now remember, there's some things that God is doing, but there's some things that we need to do as well. Are you with me? If the priest doesn't do his job, we'll never get to that place. But if man doesn't do his, his job, the Bible says, if you do these things, you shall never fall. So there's some things that God is doing, but there's some also some things that we must do in cooperation with Jesus. Are you with me? It says, those who do not realize the necessity of what is to be done will be passed by, and the heavenly messengers will work with those who are called the what? Common people. Fitting them to carry the truth to many places. Now is the time for us to awake and do what we can. So what do you think this CPR is? Talk to me a minute. What do you think it is? Come on. Common people revival and reformation. We need some common people classes to do some revival, reformation. What do you say? And you don't need a doctor to do that. You can, it can take you just a few short months to learn how to do CPRR. What do you say? And all we have is a few short months. We're going to see that right now. Look at what this says. We need to do this now. God is pouring out the vows. Remember we talked about this. We don't go to a point. We found out that God was appointed his vow, but first, before brothers and sisters can get this loud cry, he must have the latter rain. Before the latter rain must come a revival and reformation. But before this, Satan has tried to prevent it by introducing a what? Counterfeit. We noticed that this counterfeit was to take place in Babylon. We found out that Babylon, this pope, is the head of the church. We found out that the first fall of Babylon, the mother, took place near the uh, third century. Uh, and the third century, in the beginning of the Christian church, you remember what the apostle said? He says, look, there's going to come a what? Falling away first. This formed the mother of harlots. Am I right or wrong? Amen. Found out that it wouldn't just be the mother of harlots. We found out that this will continue. We found out that Rome says she is the mother church. We looked at this. But we found out that the mother is just like our daughter. So if you want to know the daughter, you've got to look at the birthmark. Am I right or wrong? Now, what is the mark? Look at what it says. Sunday is what? So those churches that have been brainwashed by the church of Rome to think that Sunday is the Sabbath, those churches have the birthmark of her what? Of her mother. Do you know that there are many sincere Christians right now in Atlanta, many sincere churches that don't know that the seventh day is the Sabbath? Right here, Christians in those churches who love God that do not know it, but my brothers and sisters, it has to be made plain. What do you say? I never forget we were at a place doing some meetings, and a man came uh, that was there who, was, who owned the place, and he was a multimillionaire, and we were doing some meetings there, and we spent some time at his house. And we started talking about health reform because he had some sickness and he wanted to know about health. And he said, well, your church knows a lot about health. And we started giving him some natural remedies, helping him with his condition. And it was a blessing. But then he said one night, he said, you know, as we were sitting down, just sitting around the table talking a little bit. He said, you know, you got some good things. But, but, but why is your church confused about the day of worship? Now, I didn't bring it up, but I wasn't afraid to talk about it. And I said, now listen, I said, listen, I believe in the Bible. I put my Bible above my church. And I said, if the Bible says it, I want to believe it. And I will go and preach and teach anywhere in the world that this is what the Bible said. If Sunday is the Sabbath, if it's in the Bible, I'll believe it and practice it. I said, but I have to follow and find the text of Scripture because man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so I asked him, I said to him, I said, if you show me one text in the Bible, that shows me that the first day of the week is the day that God blessed and wanted us to worship on, I said, I'll be happy to follow it because I want to follow Jesus. I love God. I want to follow the Bible. He said, I'm a Baptist minister. I know it's in there. I said, well, listen, just give me one. In fact, we made a, we, we made a proposal. We said that we will give, and I know the man didn't need it, but we said we will give $10,000 if you can just find one text. We go everywhere, and when we go from place to place, we tell the world that. All of a sudden, 
The man said to him, I'm going up to my Bible, get my Bible, and I'm going to bring this text back. He goes upstairs. He didn't come back down that night. I didn't see him until the next morning. He changed the subject. There is no text in the Bible, but many Christians have believed it until they study it for themselves. And many ministers are going to gladly accept the truth. Many members are going to gladly accept the truth when they hear it for themselves that Sunday, in fact, the Catholic Church says, Sunday is a what? This is 1990, Catholic Press, 1990. Sunday is a Catholic institution. And its claims of observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. It says from beginning to end of Scripture, there is not a single passage that warrants the transfer of a weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first. The Catholic Church says not one text of Scripture. They know it. And her churches, her daughters, have her mark. Now, my brothers and sisters, that tells me that as you look at all these daughters, that in 1844, those churches that clung to Sunday worship are a part of Babylon. Now, when did the fall of Babylon start? Talk to me. When did the fall of Babylon start? 1844. What is going to bring the completion to the fall of Babylon? What is the event that's going to bring complete completion to the fall of Babylon? You remember in Revelation 14, verse 8, the Bible says, Babylon what? Is fallen, is fallen. We studied this this morning. Then we found out that the Bible says in Revelation 18 that a call is made again in Revelation 18. That Babylon is what? Let's go to Revelation 18. Let's go there. The Bible says in Revelation 18, and verses 2, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Say it with me, Babylon the what? Great is fallen is what? Is that past or present? So here's a fall that started in 1844, but did not complete. And at Revelation 18, Babylon is still falling. Now notice what happens. She comes to a fall. She comes to the ground. She reaches ground zero. It says, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of what? Of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And then the Bible says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her what? Fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed what? Now we studied this this morning from Ezekiel 16. What does the church do to commit fornication with the kings of the earth? The woman is a church power. The kings of the earth is a what? State power. Fornication joins two bodies. So then, in order to commit this fornication with the kings of the earth, Babylon must do what? Church and state must do what? Must unite. What event is going to bring the union of church and state? Talk to me. What event? The National Sunday Law. So when the National Sunday Law is passed, the fall of Babylon will be what? Complete. We read this. It says the change is a progressive one and the perfect fulfillment of Revelation 14, 8 is yet what? Future. But when do our sins reach into heaven? When the law of God is finally made what? Void by legislation. Look what it says. Last day of Vince 198, coming from 1894. It says she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of what? Her fornication. How is this done? By forcing men to accept a what? What event forces men to accept a spirit, a spirit Sabbath? The National Sunday Law. So when the National Sunday Law is passed, the fall of Babylon is what? But when Babylon's fall is complete, it's too late for seven-day Adventists to get a revival and reformation because God is pouring out his spirit. Are you with me? Now, my brothers and sisters, that means that we must get ready in this revival reformation before the complete fall. So our question tonight before we close is, how close are we to the complete fall of Babylon before the church and state unites? Are you with me? The Bible tells us, as we said this morning, the clothing that the whore is going to be wearing before she commits fornication. And if you know it, as I said before this morning, that women don't leave the house until they dress. Am I right or wrong? 
And so look at the last condition just prior to the formation of the Sunday law 